I'm trying to answer a question that I've frequently been asked before. Which one? I don't suppose I'm fooling anybody for a minute that I can actually see what I'm looking at without these. I'm looking at an insect book, a generalised insect book. Because time and time again over the years I've been asked for various recommendations by a number of people wanting to find that all-inclusive insect book? Well, the short answer is there isn't one, really. At one time a day, considered to be probably the best, at least I know too, was this one. The Collins Field Guide to Insects of Great Britain and Northern Europe. Famously known as Ginnery, named after the author. And I suppose for a starter book, it could be useful. However, the big problem with recommending insect books, or books generalising insects, is that if one single book was to try and incorporate just the UK's insects, it would probably take up most of the shelves behind me. That's it. It was done to record each species and record each species and show each species well. It's not very practical. If you're looking for a book and a book that fits nicely in your pocket, this one never did. Unless you've got enormously long and deep pockets. So, is there a book that can meet the needs of people just wanting to delve a little bit or try and identify the insects that they find? Almost. Well then, is there a comprehensive field guide, one that's pocket sized, lightweight and easy to go through and not using technical jargon. Is there such a book available on UK insects? No, there isn't. Even though the UK is a very small island in terms of islands of the world, it does have a wealth of invertebrates. It has a great fauna, the UK, and it's a developing fauna. It's an, a, a fauna that's increasing due to increasing temperatures across Europe and the northern parts of Europe. And so, while everybody would love a book that covers everything, that covers every species, it's not possible and it's never going to happen, at least not in one volume. That always comes as a big disappointment to people because many people quite often don't realise the vastness or the relative vastness of UK invertebrates. If they see a, a green beetle or a red beetle, they can look in a book and say ladybird or something else. They don't realise that there are numerous red beetles in the UK and there are numerous green beetles in the UK and I'll just use them as an instance. People think that there's just one red beetle and one green beetle and perhaps a blue one and a yellow one. But there are, for every insect pretty much, 
there are a number of lookalikes, and in the case of Stephylinid beetles, the famous rove beetles, there's over a thousand lookalikes. And that's part of the reason as to why I think a lot of people don't get into beetles. Now this Ginnery's Guide, it was one of the first books I had on a whole range of invertebrates before even I took the challenge of different invertebrates. This was the book I used. It's basic, although the text is very good. Very good in parts, and there are keys. Keys including the wing venation to get a species of fly down to species, or at least down to family. But it's not quite good enough. But there again, nothing is. The book I would wholeheartedly recommend, and I'll put this in now so you can watch this little bit and then you can switch off if you want to and go watch something else on YouTube, but it's this one. Paul Brock, the author, is a friend. Dillis and I met Paul and his sister a few years ago, but Paul asked us many years ago if we could supply many photos, which we did. Hence the reason why I've got copies of the book only too pleased to include our photographs in what is a fabulous work of art, this book. It's a labour of love and definitely a work of art. The pictures are all photographs, and many of them taken by Paul himself. And it's a cracking book and covers probably most of the species of invertebrates in the UK that you're ever likely to find or come across. But if you decided to take up Diptera, for example, that book would be no good whatsoever, or of very little use. It might be a good way of getting into Diptera and into the different other invertebrate orders we have here in the UK. But eventually, you're going to need books that are far more specialised. And in many ways, the UK is well behind our European counterparts because in Europe they're more advanced in their books or literature regarding the identification of things like leaf hoppers or other types of bugs and flies. We do have some books on flies and if you do go into flies the best books you can probably get are books like this. This is just one volume on tachinid flies, but it tells you all you need to know and how to key out tachinid flies. And there are other volumes in the series on different families of dipter. So there are some books in English that can help you with your ID. But quite often, you have to start looking at books written in German or perhaps Dutch. We're a long way behind in some, in some respects, and I don't think we'll ever catch up. And the possibility of a book like this that doesn't cover all the species in the UK by any means. It's a book on flies in the UK illustrating species and describing species with distribution maps will probably fill all of these shelves and there's more shelves that you can't see it'll never happen it'll never happen and that's a shame really so in terms of books finding the ideal book the ideal all-round book on insects in the uk i would say this one without a shadow of a doubt. The old Ginnery book is the book that most of us sort of grew up with and I suppose at one time could have been classed as something of a Bible for those entomologists or those budding entomologists many years ago. But it's long outdated now. That's the thing with books. They can be out of date 
even by the re print release date. So the internet then, is the internet answer? Well, in a way, I suppose the internet is, but most people who rely on keys to identify insects, and they're the more experienced of entomologists, probably don't go that much down the internet route and require books, and like I've showed you on touching eBay there, more specialist books in order to key out that little tiny fly or that smart tiny little beetle. The internet's not so good for that. Although things are changing, there are some decent websites that can help you. So if you're after the perfect insect book, one that you can just plop into your pocket of your jacket or your trousers, you're going to be, unfortunately, extremely disappointed because, I mean, as good as this book is, I don't know many pockets that will fill that. And if you wore that in your jacket pocket, you'd be like that. People would think you'd had a stroke. So I can't recommend a general insect book for carrying around if you wanted to an insect book, a general insect book in the home, then Paul Brock's Insects of Britain and Ireland is the one. Paul has gone even better. Next time you're down the Costa del Sol, take this one with you. It's on the same format and is an excellent book that would help enormously. And if you're more specialised, on the new forest maybe i'll go down to the new forest one day and use this or i could just take paul along i'm sure that paul would oblige